Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 195 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. You sound a little skippy today. Well, I'm getting ready to head out to California. So oh, sweet. I'm getting out of Chile, Indy. Going to spend a couple days out there. Big preet Christmas party. Oh, you know. that's lovely. Good for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to so it. So that means we are recording on a Wednesday instead of a Friday. Gotcha. Yep, because I don't plan on doing this. <laughs> Good for you. Well, I hope you have a great time. Well, I appreciate that. Skippy. So, so it's official. LMT Lab Day Chicago. Oh, yeah. I don't even need to say it, but it's the biggest dental lab event of the year. It's up for registration. So they are back in the same location around the same time, February 24th to the 26th. Hey, I'd like to give a shout out to Cal Lab too. Cal Lab's open for registration as well. Same weekend. There you go. Do yourself a favor. Join Cal Lab. Hit both in the same weekend. Exactly, It's amazing, both of them. Barb and I will be recording at LMT Lab Day Chicago at the Preet booth, so make sure you find us. And if you want to, sit down. We'll record with you. Even if you've been on the podcast before, we don't care. We'd love to an update on what's going on. Sounds good. And of course, both of us will be also at Cal Lab, but not recording. And we will also both be at the Big Bar, <laughs> or I will be. So come see me there. There you go. Depends on if you want raspy barb in the morning <laughs> or fun barb in the evening. Hey, yes, yes, you're right. It is true. <laughs> so head over to cal-lab.org, I think. Yep. I don't know. I'm going off the whim. And then also lmtmag.com and register, and hopefully we'll see everybody uh, in February. Cool. So this week we are back again for the last time in Louisville at the Whitmix Digital Forum from the Preet booth. First up is a really interesting new company that can automate the nesting of crowns and printing. They're called Octon. Now, uh, it's spelled a little different. O-Q-T-O-N. Octon. 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 Sounds like a Klingon. <laughs> Patrick Strovkirch sits down to explain how this amazing software can help labs increase volume and productivity by not adding more machines, but by using the machines you have just a little smarter. Then we chat with another Whitmix employee, Tom Hewell. I think you already headed off to the airport when I talked to this gentleman. Aww. Tom is the digital technical specialist on the West Coast and has an interesting path to get to where he is today that goes from lab school to selling hairbrushes to becoming a supplier vendor to titanium bars to 3D printers. Oh, you're just giving up the whole podcast with these. <laughs> and then at Whitmix. It's a great story. It's a lot of fun. And then we have a special bonus conversation. So back in late September, I was at the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories that was in North Carolina. And I actually recorded two people at the same time with the same name. So Barb, unfortunately you weren't at the show. So if you're not there, I don't record much. So these are the only two people I recorded at the wow. whole show. Thanks for the shout out, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was on fire. But I was happy to chat with Nathan Stainbeck and Nathan DeBise. Both are current dental technology students at the Durham Technical Community College. Cool enough that I actually got to talk to the whole class and see the place when I was out there. But the two Nates were nice enough to sit down and talk about why they got into the dental technology program and where they hope it takes them next. So join us as we chat with Patrick Stroker, Tom Hewell, Nathan Steinbeck, and Nathan Delbisi. Did you know that most InLab MCX5 users that have ordered burrs from Grow3x once keep on ordering Grow3x burrs over and over again? No way. You know what? I didn't know that. Why do you think that is, Elvis? Well, I think it's because Grow3x burrs are engineered by some of the same folks who have been providing burrs to some of the largest U.S. production labs 
for years. Did you also know that most roll-ins and DG Shake users have no idea what they are missing out on? Well, I think I can guess what they're missing out on. You are right. Most Rollin and DG Shape users have absolutely no idea how good and great Grow3 Experts are because they think that the Grow3 Experts are only for the in-lab systems. Well, they are wrong. wrong. <laughs> to give Rollin and DG Shape users the opportunity to find out for themselves how great the purrs are for their machines, Grow3X is now offering a buy three, get two purrs free special. This is exclusively for Voices from the Bench listeners, you guys, so please go support them. So all you simply have to do is go to the Grow3x website. That's grow3x.com. Click on Burrs, then select Roland and DG Shape. Add five Burrs of your choice to your cart. Click on Checkout. Enter the discount code B3G2. That is B as in boy, the number three, G as in girl, the number two, burrs, and check out. That's awesome. You know what? We actually have a code, Elvis. Boom. That was easy, guys. Go for it. Free burrs. Use them and use them well. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Grow3x. Thank you. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. Octon. Octon. I don't even know your name. Yeah, what's your Patrick. name? Patrick. Patrick Strokirch. What now? Patrick. Patrick. I got that part. Strokirch. Strokirch. Yeah. And your company is called Octon. 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 Yep. So, you're. We see you at a booth here at the Whitmix Digital Forum. You're down there at the end. We have no idea what you do. Sure. What do you do? So we are a cloud-based uh, software, machine agnostic, meaning we work with any and all companies. We automate production by utilizing artificial intelligence. So we take everything from the design stage through including all the work processes to the end of production and even post-processing and manage that all within one platform. There's not another uh, solution like this uh, available. That's what we heard. So I was talking to somebody else. I think it was Reed Nunnally, and he had just come from your booth over there. And I said, what is that? And he said, it's a brand new company. It's a really, really great. And so I went over and I was like, come over and talk to us. So how how new is the company? Well, we started in 2017. So our founders were with uh, Autodesk. Mm -hmm. They were VPs there and they decided to leave the company because they realized that. Heard of Autodesk. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a a CAD uh, software. Yeah. And they realized that the manufacturing industry was lacking a solution like this. So they said, huh, let's let's go ahead and uh, create a solution called it Octin and brought it to market. So we're automating the process of production, utilizing artificial intelligence. Our CEO, Ben, uh, has a PhD in AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he used that knowledge to be able to create the Where platform. Where do you get a PhD in AI? Ghent University in uh, Belgium, I believe. Belgium. Belgium. So it's yeah. a Belgium. That's where it started? Exactly. Wow. So, uh, in California. So yeah, he moved to California in Silicon Valley and started the company with two partners and uh, brought it to where we are today. Wow. So is it only in dental? Uh, so we have different verticals. Okay. So we have a healthcare vertical, which covers medical and dental. Then we have a jewelry vertical. Um, we have robotic welding. Um, we're in any <laughs> manufacturing cool. process. So yeah. aerospace, defense, automotive, dental, jewelry, anything that has a, a production or a, a machine park, we're able to work within that as a complete operating system, an MOS, mm-hmm. manufacturing operating system, and different components of that like MES, manufacturing execution system, quality assurance, IoT. So we have different uh, capabilities to be able to link to machines through Internet of Things, to be able to monitor the machine, oh, wow. set up alerts, dashboards, schedule the machine park. So it's an all-encompassing finger on the pulse of the production process. So if a lab were to come in and acquire your system, what does that look like for the laboratory? Like, how would they need to change? How would they incorporate it? Sure. Say I have two different mills mm-hmm. and printers and, you know, different things. Right. How does that... So we'll take all of those like? into into the Octum platform because it's cloud-based. Mm-hmm. So many of the partners that we have are, are global. So they have operations in different parts of the world. So they're able to use one platform to do their design, to then send it to production in another part of the world. So when a, a company decides to start with Octon, we open up a tenant or, or have them have access to the platform. We find out first uh, with some discovery what types of machines they have, what types of machines they want to put into Octon, and then we're able to bring those all in. So uh, agnostic to the machine manufacturers, as I mentioned, we want to work with anybody and everybody. And uh, if we're not working with them today, we will be tomorrow. We'll, we'll write an API. 
So wow. a lab will accept the work, mm-hmm. do the design. Correct. And it's your software that takes it after the design? Correct. Mm-hmm. And does it nest it? So it does. So okay. uh, depending upon the, the, the machine. Yeah. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take the order, uh, we'll call it an order, we'll process it. So through artificial intelligence, it gets uploaded and gets configured for either milling or printing tight nesting. Uh, so with the Octane solution, we're able to nest tighter and produce more with less mm-hmm. and do it faster and with less human involvement. So that automation is key. So we're automating the entire workflow process and not that we're removing people. We're just, we're allowing those people to do more important things sure. within that process than just clicking buttons and, and moving things three-dimensionally. So even if that designer is sitting right next to that mill, mm-hmm. it still goes up in the cloud does all this stuff and comes right back down to that mill. Exactly. That's cool. And then how does that person know, oh, I got to put in a certain puck at this time and all that jazz. Right. So basically we we have actions and and like for basically a recipe. So for this machine, it uses this. So we enter all of that into the system and it knows that, okay, when I upload, for example, a bunch of crown files, Mm -hmm. the software will recognize, oh, those are crowns. I know what these are. It will position them on the build plate virtually, nesting them very dense Mm. and send the mill. Sure. And it tracks the entire process with complete accountability. It'll it'll track pieces and parts as well as the, the total nest for reliability, and if there's an issue ever in the future, then you can go back through the records and see what machine it was done on by who, what materials were used. Maybe there was a material issue. So complete traceability oh, nice. throughout the automation wow. process. That's becoming more and more needed in our industry, yeah. popular with the whole uh, Indeed. FDA and all that. I jazz. like the fact yeah. that they nest it because I know for, for our laboratory, one mm-hmm. of the spots is difficult to fill is nesting and doing it properly exactly. and being able to utilize the whole puck and not have a bunch of extra material and right um, i can see where that'd be a huge money saver also time absolutely. and money time and money for the lab. Ab- absolutely how quick does it nest very quickly so if yeah. i upload one case or a thousand cases they all run in parallel so one takes just as long as a thousand wow what indeed so that's the power so if you design of a thousand crowns upload it mm-hmm. like in a snap you'll have them all nested Nearly a snap. That's insane. insane yeah. But whether it's one or it's a snap. thousand, it, because the platform runs in parallel, it looks at each of those individually, but at the same time to nest them. So if I nest one versus the hundred, let's say, yeah, uh, it's the same time. Hmm. That's crazy. Yep. So you can use it for printing. You can use it for milling. You can use it for designing. So it's just everything in one solution. Post design. That's so right. Design That's comes right. in. So, so we design exactly. Okay. So we're able to do uh, metal printing, mm-hmm. resin printing. And CNC milling in zirconia right now. Wow. Any dental application, really. Does this platform work on smaller labs? Is it is it too much for a small lab? Or uh, no, it uh, any laboratory that has a machine part. So if they have one machine, I can sh- I can typically show a, a positive ROI on Octin for them. Really. And right. what does the lab pay for the software? Is it a flat fee or is it a per? It's Master. subscription based, okay. uh, so there's nothing to load on a local server because it's cloud based. Yeah. So they pay for user access, so each login or person that utilizes it, and then per machine. And we group machines based upon, for example, in the printing world, the build plate size, either small, medium, or large, yep. and then we we bill accordingly. So uh, we've worked out manufacturers, and we know the different machines there and how big the build plates are, what they can produce. A lot of different factors that go into it. How we classify small, medium, or large, and then yeah. they just pay per month. Wow. And you work with all the big companies. We do. Carbon. Indeed. Roland. Mm-hmm. All the big ones. We do. And a lot of small ones that nobody's even heard of. Yeah. Right. Because, again, we, we want to work with everybody. And eventually uh, we will. And a lot of times our partners uh, might have different machines in their park that maybe we don't work with yet. And they contact the manufacturer and say, hey, we want to work with Octane. You all need to work with them as well. And they typically do that. Yeah. Wow. That's Interesting. Nice. So. You mentioned earlier a lot of people having different parts around the world. Do you mm-hmm. see that a lot? Uh, more and more. So th- they'll have production in, in one place, design in another place. So they're really able to utilize a cloud base rather than having a local server-based loadable software. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm working with several customers right now that have global operations with different pieces and parts of that workflow process in different locations. Wow. So you said jewelry? So you guys do several different mm-hmm. companies? We have into jewelry different vertical industries as well, yeah. And- Wow. So how'd you find out about the Whitmix Digital Forum? Um, so uh, 
prior positions that I've had, I've, I've worked with Whitmix before, and as soon as I came over to uh, Octon, I decided to contact uh, Pat Higgins. Yeah. Uh, he and I worked in the past together and said, hey, we, I have a super solution that maybe you'd consider at some point adding to your portfolio, mm-hmm. possibly as a, a dealer partner. Mm-hmm. And he and I have had several discovery calls uh, about that, and he said, well, you should come to the forum and we can talk more. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. Because nice. this is a great event. The company's buzzing, I'll tell you. I've heard yeah. a couple people talk about it, and we haven't been able to sit down with too many people, so I'm super grateful you said yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Normally, I'm me. out grabbing people, and they come <laughs> up, and they're like, sure, I'll sit down, but this has been a tough one. But yeah. Right. So where did you come from? Did you have prior dental background? I've been in dental for about 25 years. Oh, wow. uh, I worked for different dental distributors and dental manufacturers throughout my career, all the way from uh, mostly technology. So it's always been digital radiography, cone beam, wow. CAD cam, dentistry. Wow. So you're you're in it. I'm, I'm in it deep, <laughs> whether I want to be or not. Hygienist by training. I went to hygiene school. Really? Got a master's degree in hygiene, wow. uh, master's degree in business. Well, I just heard and that you could go back to hygiene and make, what, 60 bucks an hour? Yeah, instead? working for Heartland, $60 yeah. an hour wow. and a $25,000 signing bonus yeah. if they stay for two years. Holy cow. Because yeah. nobody can find anybody anymore. Right. It's just so been so tough. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe Moonlight, I don't know. But no. <laughs> Octon's a super company. I, uh, I intend to retire with them. Yeah. That's fantastic. So how many labs, are they in a lot, or is it... I, I've never heard of them, so I was just yeah. It's uh, so we're we're struggling with the the brand identity, right? Sure. Getting our name out there. We started in Europe, so uh, my role was, as director of sales for U.S. and Canada was to bring Octon to the U.S. and Canada. How long has it been over there? Um, since 2017. Oh, same so, time. Yeah. yeah. So okay. 2017 was, was created and born, but they rolled it out first in different verticals and then uh, in Europe. Yeah, and then 2020 probably uh, kicked everybody's butt. So you know that's a, non- right. a, a non-year right there. Yeah. So that's probably why, because mm-hmm. it's the first meeting we've been to in probably a year and a half. Yeah. Or, it's or I have. Indeed. Yeah. Does it work with better? lab situations than others um it, it, it really it, just like any technology the lab has to embrace it and change yeah. is always difficult right but it truly is it an easy platform it's just making that commitment to learning it and doing it so how quick can a lab buy into it and learn it three hours three hours that's it and they're wow. up and going yep at max because wow. the software really with the artificial intelligence and the automation does everything but it's as a dental technician there's a trust factor that needs to build they need to trust the software so they'll be doing things in there that maybe uh, two weeks later they ah, i don't need to do that anymore i trust that it's going to do it and do it right but it's that checks and balances in the beginning mm-hmm. so two to three weeks into it they're doing one click automation psh, through the process done wow and you're guaranteeing that they're not going to put what is it called a sprue like right on the margin or something or indeed so our, you're, you're the ai gonna... is smart it knows really? where the proximal surfaces are not to put them there or on the margin and the operator always has the chance to review the parts and or the nest before they send a production. But, again, that quickly uh, goes away because that trust factor builds. Really? That's, that's, that's cool. That's fascinating. Right. That's really neat. Indeed. I'm excited. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a good idea. Like you mentioned, people that nest, I mean. It's that's the hardest position in the lab to fill and to do it accurately. And, like I said, money and time. Exactly. And trying to find employees nowadays has been right. really tough. So you're not really, exactly. you know, getting rid of anybody. You're helping the laboratories that can't find anybody. Exactly. Now People you take those nesters and you make them designers. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And Octa never quits and never goes on vacation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What, about, what if it. the internet's down? <laughs> it's just up, it's upload. So it's it's only internet-based, based upon the lab sending the cases up. Once the case is up, they could close, it's walk working. away. Hurricane could come and wipe out their server. I've got it in the cloud, and it's working. <laughs> Interesting. That's a huge benefit, so too. If someone's got a multi-disc mill, mm-hmm. could you load that thing up for a weekend and then just walk away and it, everything gets nested and milled and done? You could. You could. So typically if a, a, a laboratory, I've had a recent example where they were looking to buy another machine uh, to increase their productivity, they implemented Octin, and now that machine has been delayed because they don't need to buy it because it's so much more efficient. We're saving time. We're saving money. We're saving yeah. material. Machine manufacturers realize that what we're able to do, we're able to do very, very well. Eventually, they'll need more machines, but we're able to take that and, and offset that. So, yeah, right off the bat, when a lab says, oh, man, I need more machines, this is an option. Exactly. Because now they can do more units with what they already have. Exactly. That's Be able huge. to do more with what you have is the key. That's you know, huge. Automated. That's what we're all about. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's so easy to say, oh, I'm so busy, let's buy another mill. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm so busy, let's buy another mill. And that's Actually, just no, through you have six mills. It's a hardware mindset, right? Yeah. But what's, what's running that hardware? Where could we introduce an efficiency? And it's mm-hmm. with, with Octa. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we're paying this lazy kid to nest. It takes four <laughs> hours. Or doesn't show up. Or doesn't show up. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Exactly. So we still need people. It's just uh, different different tasking of those people mm-hmm. and usually uh, using their skill sets better somewhere else, not rotating and pinning yeah. and nesting. So what is it? Octon. O-C-T-O-N? O-Q-T-O-N. That is a Q. Octon. Okay. Octon. If everyone goes check it out, look at the logo, <laughs> you'll see where I got that. Yeah. Right. So is it O-Q-T-O-N dot com? Correct. Check it out. Yep. Okay. Octon right. com. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. I think it's a. I check think it it's out, neat. guys. Yeah. Awesome. We appreciate you coming Great. on. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Appreciate down. it. Thank you. Have a you. good one. Wow, the quality is excellent. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you got the Whitmix shoes on. Absolutely. Don't you love that they have this marketing gimmick that allows you not to have to wear dress shoes all day? I know. I know. They're, actually, they're very comfortable. Uh, I didn't think they were going to be. Yeah, Vans don't look comfortable. Uh, yeah, the, I have some inserts in there. Okay, yeah. So... Being on your feet all day, you've got to take the necessary precautions Absolutely. to make yourself comfortable. So, so here we are, Tom Huell, H O U L E. Absolutely, because <laughs> I always want to say H U E L. Yes, cool, like Huel. cool Huel, as my son would say. Cool Huel, cool Huel. So you've been around. I've well, been how, around. How did you get started? Well, let me take you back. I was originally going to be a dentist. Okay. And I went one year of college. And started thinking about what the possibilities were going to be. And then eight years of schooling, four years of college, four years of dental school. Seemed kind of overwhelming for an 18-year-old that seemed like a lifetime. Yeah. And I, after that one year of college, I went cross-country and, and hung out with a friend of mine in San Diego. I was living in Maine. Oh, wow. Went cross-country with a couple of high school friends. We went to Denver by car cross country that was quite an experience and then down from denver they stayed with their friends relatives and then i took a greyhound bus wow down to san diego and stayed there for about a year and then it was 1974 the economy wasn't doing so well i wasn't able to get a job and i happened to stumble when i was looking for a job happened to stumble in the dental lab okay 74 san diego chatted with those guys for a little bit and went back home to maine and decided I was going to go to lab school. And I looked at, I think there was a community college in Florida and one in New York City mm-hmm. in Brooklyn. So I applied to the both of them, got accepted to the one in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. And New York City Community College at the time. They've since rebranded, rechanged their name. But it's and still the dental technology school. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, with Renata. Absolutely. Yeah. Went back home. Uh, Greyhound bus again, back home from San Diego to Florida to that's Maine. A, that's a long bus trip. That's a long <laughs> bus trip, you know. And so I got to see America, which was great. Yep. Went back home and, like I was saying, applied to New York City Community yep. College. Yep. And yep. then one in Florida, got accepted to the one in Brooklyn. And again, moving to Brooklyn, I bought a book, Way to Stay in the United States for five dollars and less. This was nineteen seventy five. That's a legit book. Legit book. And they're on because they didn't have any housing at the, oh, car, at okay. the community sure. college. Yeah, so yeah. I had to get my own. I didn't know anybody in the city. Uh, so I got the book and there it was, the YMCA in Brooklyn. So I called them, made reservations. I was hoping my dad was gonna drive me down there, so but he dropped me off at the corner uh, grocery store with a bus. Picked me up yeah. and off to New York City I went. And you stayed at the YMCA? At the YMCA. And like a cot? Uh, actually, well, a little bit better than a cot. Yeah. You know, no box spring. Was there individual rooms? Individual rooms. Because the YMCA, what it used to be, is not what it is today. No, not at all. That's why it, it was so. a pretty scary place. Yeah, but it was almost like, oh, like what do they call it, a hostel or something? It or? was, yeah, it was a hostel. There were people, older men and women that were staying there. Well, yeah, no women, older men that were staying there. So I, I had my footlocker in Port Authority in Manhattan. First time on the subway with my footlocker, backpack, yeah. and it was, it was kind of a, a unique adventure. So I get to the YMCA check-in, and that night I happened to bump into a guy in the hallway. And not that we hit it off, but he was, you know, friendly. I went back up to my room. He asked me what my number is. He said, I'm down the hall. Next thing I know, he's on the ledge, pounding on my window. and I, <laughs> it, Yeah, it was a trip. Yeah. It was a trip. And that night, there was an older gentleman in there yelling at somebody else. Needless to say, I I tried to get out as soon as I can. So how long were you there? 
probably less than a month by yeah. the time I got an apartment and just to ride around the corner. Sure, yeah. Yeah, it was unique. But college at the, at the city college was really, it was also another experience. Coming from a small town in Maine. Yeah. Going into the big city. And <laughs> in New York in 1975 was kind of like the wild, wild west. Uh, yeah. In the cafeteria. People are smoking dope. You could smell it in the yeah. air, and and so, but lab school was was really good. There was probably two sessions. There was about twenty in the first session, and and another twenty in the second session. By the end of four, by the end of two years, there was only like fifteen left. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And so my professor at the time was Dr. Nicholas Martinelli. He had written a book okay. on dental technology. When we went through plaster carving. Cronum Bridge, partial dentures, ceramics was at the end. Hmm. And so that was two years of dental technology. Did you do removables and stuff? Yeah, we did removables. Okay, yeah. yeah. Did, some, did a partial, did a denture. Uh, yep. So, yeah, we, they pretty much covered the whole spectrum. And it was a two-year school. It was a two-year program okay. at the time. Yeah. Yep. So you graduated and? I graduated, but while I was going to school, I became a fuller brush salesman. A what? A fuller brush salesman. What's a fuller brush? Fuller, fuller, F U L L E R. Oh, is that brush. a brand name? It's a brand name. Okay. So, th- like a hairbrush? Hairbrushes, yeah. Hairbrushes. They needed salesmen for that? Hairbrushes, <laughs> cleaning products. Yeah, it was a big deal. So, the company got started in the depression okay. on hairbrushes, and then it morphed into cleaning products sure. and so forth. And so, I was, I was like an independent distributor. Interesting. So, yeah, part of my territory was the garment district in Manhattan, the sewing factories. Hmm. Uh, we'd go there during lunchtime with free samples and yep, write yep. the orders, take the orders, process the orders, come back in two weeks, deliver, collect the money. So that was my entry into the world of selling. Yeah. Because at the time when I was doing lab work, I was kind of antsy. To be able to sit there for eight hours I was kind of a, a, a different mind shift for me. And I, I made the decision, well, let me get into sales. I was an introvert, still an introvert, and kind of forced me out into the world to being more public yeah. and developing my communication skills. Okay. So I did full of brush after graduation, probably for another year and a half, two years. And then my... I, no lab work. No lab work. Yeah, wow. That's... One of my biggest regrets, uh, not sitting down at the bench for at least a couple of years. You never did. Never did. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. never did. Yeah. Uh, if, if I had to do it over again, I think I would. Sure. You know, just to get the hands-on practical experience. Because two years of schooling, just dabbling, yeah. it's not, doesn't make yeah. you a technician. No. You know, and, and even when you're going out, some of my friends that were going out, they were expecting top pay. Mm. But... At, at that level, even though you have two years of school, you're at an apprentice level. Yeah, sure. You know, you're starting basically from square one. Absolutely. Unless you have some really natural talent yep. that you morphed into something that you could go ahead and be productive. Yeah, and that was pretty rare, I'm sure. Oh, very rare. Yeah. So I entered the world of selling, and, and from there I applied to J.M. Nay. Oh, Nay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Chuck Heckner and uh, Dick Morris hired me. Well, I'm sure the school got you that job. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How did you even know to go to them? From school? or uh, From school. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You're, you're very familiar with the different manufacturers. Not that they came in, but the materials, the, the – I'm just trying to think if we even had trade journals back then. A long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> did they have written word back then? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you hooked up with Nay. Hooked up with Nay. Yep. And worked for them for five years. They were about, a big alloy, right? Yeah, yeah, dental alloy. They had the Mark III front loader porcelain yes. oven. Yep, yep. At the time I was there, they just introduced, I'm not sure what year, the, the System 8, the automatic porcelain oh, oven. Was that the first one that was automatic? That was the first one. Yeah. Uh, so that was interesting. And then I was in, so my territory at the time I joined Nay was Connecticut, and then about a year into it, I moved to California. Hmm. So they, they transferred me out to California, Northern Cal, and my territory was Northern California. Okay. So I was with them for 75, let's see, that's a long time ago, <laughs> 79 to 81, I believe. Okay. Yeah. 
No, I moved to 83, 79 to 83. Yeah. We moved out there in 81, my wife and I. Okay. And then where? Right there. I stayed there. And then from, from Nay, I, I took a hiatus, left the lab industry, sold life insurance, and came back because that wasn't my forte. I yeah. liked the relationship that I had built with the lab owners. I mean, I still have lifelong friends sure. as a result of being in the industry. And you see second generation. It's great. Third generation, That's which cool. is really, really rewarding. Yep. And so from Nay, I ended up going to uh, Jelenko, was mm -hmm. with them for a number of years. Yep. And then from there, Zahn. Mm. Was with Zahn for about 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Wow, you were with Zahn for a long time. For a long time. Yeah, Norm Weinstock. Norm yep. and I met in, uh, uh, prior to that, I was with Leach and Dylan. So I've got, a, I've been, a, been around. Yeah. yeah. Been around. Like I said. Yeah, yeah. been around. <laughs> What did you do at Zahn? I was hired as the regional sales manager for the West Coast to build up their sales team. So basically everything from the Mississippi or? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. At the time, there was myself and Donna Villarose. She had the East Coast. I had the West Coast. And so it was designed to build the sales team up. How and many salespeople did you have under you? We went from zero to about six. Mm. So we hired one up in Washington, Southern Cal, Texas, Chicago. And we think we had one in Kansas at the mm. time. So my job was to hire, train, work with them, plus Support. oversee yeah. the telesales department, plus the tooth counter. Oh, yeah. 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 And then I did that for about five or six years. And then I decided that management, traveling, I had a young family, was gone a lot. So there was a territory that was open. And so I talked to Norm about it. And he said, yeah, go back into the into the field, and, and that was after about six years. I, so I, I worked the territory for another 14 years. Which territory was that? Northern Cal. Oh, just yeah, Northern Cal. Just Northern Cal. Cal. So you were driving yeah. around, hitting the labs. Driving around, hitting the labs yep. on a, on a four-week, five-week call cycle. Yep. Visiting them, introducing new products. Showing, yeah. Filling their yeah. teeth cabinets. I can't say I never did that. Yeah. I, I did it very minimal. Did you? Yeah. Our Zon rep used to come in. He had a notebook. He'd write everything we needed. And he yeah. like really did a lot of work. I don't know exactly what was going on. but Yeah, I, I think I only had like one or two customers that uh, they were so used to doing it on their own on yeah. the West Coast. Let that, <laughs> yeah, let them know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the things when I was a dental alloy salesman, I hate to say this, but I looked at the denture side a little bit different. You know, but yeah. then when I got into Zahn and saw the magnitude of the denture world yeah. and the volume of teeth that are consumed, the acrylic is consumed, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, really. The, absolutely The amount amazing. of material that's yeah. involved in those things, it's, it's a and lot. And the skill level. It, especially, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, twisting a tooth, getting it at the right angulation to give it that natural appeal for the yeah. patient. So There's certainly an art to it as well. I can't do it. No. <laughs> so Zon, 20 years, then what? Then there was a layoff. Uh, they laid a few of us off. Yeah. And then I ended up with Panthera. Oh, yeah. Great company, great family yeah, business. Yeah, we love them. We've had them on a few times. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah, I was with, uh, so yeah, at the time my boss was Kim. Yep. Kim, and so he's a great guy. Super great. And their customers love the product and the relationship that they have with mm -hmm. the the Robichon family. Yeah. They do a great job with the products. I've never it, had anything delivered to a lab in a more elaborate box in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have. Yeah. I mean, laboratories collect them. Oh, yeah. They, they, they don't want to throw them away. It's a piece yeah. of work, piece of People art. People really wanted that box. Mm -hmm. So that, that was it very interesting to learn about the bar business, the implant business. Yeah. And the removal side of it, you know, the universities, and it opened up a world of, for the prostodontists. They like implant bars and mm -hmm. working with them, and so ended up building some good relationships with some of the universities because the prostodontists, they like dealing with the implant bars. So schools were sending to Panthera. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah good for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Didn't realize that. Yeah. So how long were you with them? About a year and a half. Okay. And then I left and, and went to Carbon. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
I I was intrigued by 3D printing, and yep. a friend of mine at the time, she was over there, talked to me about it. Looked like a great opportunity. Uh, I made the switch, and then and then about a year and a half later, they had some changes, mm. and I was probably in February. They made some changes, some layoffs, and and I sat out all the last year, and I joined Whitmix February of this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had known the Steinbach family from my days at Zahn. Absolutely. Always a great company, great Wonderful. great value. They've been around for a long time. So what do you do here with Whitmix? I'm their West Coast digital technical specialist. Okay. So similar to what uh, Cassandra's doing yep. and Sherry. Yep. But on the West Coast. Oh. So represent the three shape scanners, the Roland Mills. So those two ladies divide the East and yes. you get all of the West? I get all of the West. Why but all that pressure? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I get all of the West. So Wow. So do you visit labs? Do you are you on the road a lot or it's lately it's been it's just been remote yeah. so far. Yeah. I do plan on going out and visiting the laboratories, especially locally in my neck of the woods. Sure. And I've, I've been down to Southern Cal already. I've been down to Arizona visiting laboratories, but not like I used to. I think those the days have changed of going out every day. Hitting the, hitting yeah, hitting you, route, you, yeah, I think you got to work smart. Yeah, make appointments, make sure that they're going to be there. I think the days of just showing up. I would never just show up. Yeah, I just started a role where I'm sales, my mm-hmm. first time ever, and I always call. Mm-hmm. Now, if they don't get back to me, I'm still in the area. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. going to stop by. Exactly. But I tried. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. had your chance yeah. to say no. Yeah, send an email or a phone call. Let them know you're going to be yeah. there. And if they want to see you, great. If not, if you don't get a response, it's always good to take that chance to see if they're going to be there. Yeah. But try to make an appointment before going in. Absolutely. It's, especially with equipment. Consumables might be a little bit different, but with the equipment where it's a different mindset of you know what their budget is where they're going to spend their money they might not be ready for it yeah. so just showing up don't show up to sell me yeah. something that's forty thousand uh, dollars no exactly yeah. so yeah those days are uh, i think uh, are over yeah so what's the big thing with whitmix that sells without any effort on your side i don't think anything sells without any really effort. okay yeah, yeah i think it all, it all takes some effort yeah. Not convincing, uh, making sure that you're educating the customer in a way that they want to be educated in. But we do have a really good reputation. One of the things that really attracted me to Whitmix, being an analog company, how they transitioned yeah. from analog to digital and position themselves in the marketplace. They're really strong on tech support. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. On Absolutely the products they are. The, yeah, and they in education, which has always been their forte. Yep, educating the dentists and the laboratories, and so even today they're very very strong in that area. One of the things, another thing that impresses me, is the young people that they have in their tech support. Mm-hmm. Evan Kemper, Bryce Hiller. Yep, and well, Corey's no longer there, but Corey Lambertson. Yeah, those three guys are powerhouses yeah, when it I've comes to passion. Technical knowledge and response and educating and training everybody in the digital equipment. And I know that LMT did a program on 40 and under. Yep. And I'm not sure if, uh, I don't think those guys got recognized, but since I'm on the podcast, yeah, I want to recognize them because I'm very impressed with their skill set. Yeah. And, you know, we were at the, the Denturist meeting a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And a lot of guys that interacted and women that interacted with them were very appreciative and grateful, young and old. Yeah. So they've got great communication skills and great technical skills to support. It's important to have technical help that you want to call. Mm -hmm. We all know those companies we work with where, like, you just hope nothing goes wrong because you don't want to call them. Exactly. But I travel to labs all in this area north of Kentucky, but mm-hmm. I run into so many labs that have the whip mix three shape, you know, or whatever. And right. they love the support because I'm in there, you know, selling pre products, but I'm also just learning about their lab. And I'm like, oh, three shape, who do you get that mm-hmm. through? Whip mix every time. Boom. Love it. Yes. Great support. Great. Yes. I hear it all the time. 
And those yeah. guys are great, and they they seem like they care. And oh yeah, they're passionate, and they've all worked in the dental lab industry yeah. before. Prior to coming yep. on board, we've just hired a, a new technical manager to replace Corey, and so he's really great. He's been in the industry for a while. Nice. So he's very knowledgeable, and we're beefing up our team to be able to handle that next wave of digital technology sure. that's going to be coming down the pike and labs are gearing up for it yeah i mean and then this symposium today and yesterday has been really an eye-opener hmm. for me and uh, the knowledge and where things are going to go for the laboratories yeah this is an exciting event there's yeah. a lot of looking in the future here it is going to be a, a synergistic situation in the mindset that we have to have as individuals and business owners is one of growth and collaborative working together mm -hmm. because everything is so overlapped and intertwined. Yeah. You know, you, you hear it from the clinicians, you hear it from lab owners that, you know, we need to all work together. Yeah, I agree, 100%. We all need to work together and have that. We can't have, well... This is my domain, yeah, and I'm going to protect it. Got to think outside the box. Well, that's a good thing about Whitmix. They they can be that mm -hmm. gap filler, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I've always wanted to attend the digital forum, and it's this is the ninth year, and I would see every year how it would progress and keep getting bigger yeah. and bigger, and so I was blown away of what they put together. Yeah, it's a good meeting. It's, it's a, a great meeting. Great meeting. Yeah, Had absolutely. A great time. I'd recommend anybody next year. Sign up. To sign up and attend for sure. They're going to listen to, we talked to a bunch of people. Okay. And they all, all right. had great things to say mm -hmm. about it, and they're going to miss out if they don't sign up again. Yeah, Lee Cope had a great, great presentation, yep. Dr. Shear. Yep. So you had the lab perspective, the dentist perspective, the editor of uh, Dentistry Today, yeah. his perspective. And it's all perspective. And then we have to make it our own as individuals. Nice. And what we're going to do with our business. Yeah. What am I going to do with my career? Even though my career is, is on the tail end, but I still have a growth mindset. What can I do to get better? Yeah. How can I help my customers grow their business? That's awesome. It's good to hear. As I say that, years ago I had a study group, and I put together 10 different labs from different geographical yeah. areas, and we would meet every three months, and we'd have a little program, and we'd yeah. have a discussion. How can we – what are you doing? What do you do? Kind of like a yeah. mastermind meeting. Sure. And we did that for about two or three years. You know, I had Ken Hallmeyer from Frontier Dental Laboratory, yep. Tim Warden from East Bay Dental Arts, yep. Phil from uh, BCI Dental. And so we would just meet and share ideas. Share ideas. Yeah. And I, I think a program like this offers that, and even the dental conventions offer that. Yeah. You know, and at, at I don't know who said it, but at the bar. <laughs> Very true. Great ideas are shared. Absolutely. There, More you know? cocktail napkin yeah, ideas. Ab are ab yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Drying out your business plan, where you want to be in the next five years. Yep. And it's an exciting time, and it's a scary time, too. Yeah, there's a lot of unknowns right yep, now. Absolutely. We're all in it together, and if we work together, we'll all get through it together. Yeah, and you stay close to your accounts. Yep. Build that relationship and communicate. Absolutely. Awesome, Tom. Thank you so much. Oh, right. thanks for having appreciate me. Appreciate it. it. Appreciate it. Love hearing the story. And uh, right. I love your part of Whitmix now. It's yeah. great. <laughs> awesome, man. Thanks. Thank you. We are at the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories Conference. It's an interesting name. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> ECDL. Where are we at? Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I got yes, two sir. gentlemen with me, both sharing the same first name, yeah. who I met at Durham Tech Community College, which is one of the very few dental tech schools left. So who do we have? Nate? Stainback. Nate Stainback. Yes, sir. And Nate? DiBiase. DiBiase. Yes, sir. Nate, number one. How did you fall into the dental technology program? Uh, from a dentistry background, um, my mom is actually a dentist. Oh, uh, really? Has her own office. Yep. Oh, nice. Um, and my dad uh, is a hygienist at that same office. He didn't start in the industry, but uh, over time, eventually found his way in there. Interesting, and, yeah. Um, so I'm just continuing the family business. So was your yeah. mom a dentist when you were growing up? Oh, my mom has been a dentist. Well, she got a degree, and then I was born. Okay. <laughs> so... 
Yeah, she's had her own practice for about as for literally as long as I can remember. Okay, have you ever worked in this practice? Oh yeah, that's uh, that's where my dental background comes from. Okay, um, so when I graduated undergrad, actually throughout high school a little bit, throughout undergrad, I worked at the office, and then when I graduated, I went full time, uh, working the front desk and a little bit of chair side. So you're working front desk. Dad's doing hygiene. Mm -hmm. Mom's the dentist. Mm -hmm. What other family members do you have? Cousins? Uh, Is it a whole big family affair? (laughs) My siblings are in college. Okay. Um, One of them just graduated, but he uh, went a legal route, so he's kind of doing his own thing, trying to figure out what to do there. Uh, We're trying to see what my sisters are doing. Right now, they're doing biology type stuff. Okay. Uh, Are any of them looking to be come into the dental field? I think one of them is. Another yeah. one, I think, is going into a finance kind of route. That's boring. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, she's always had good grades in math anyway, better than all of us. So yeah. So we're not worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you lean towards dental technology? Why did you want to be a lab person? Well, um... You have no idea? No. I mean, I d- <laughs> why not? <laughs> it started out kind of as a why not. I mean, yeah. my parents were uh, trying to push me to do anything in the general dentistry vicinity. I'm sure they and, wanted uh, you to be a dentist. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to do that. Why not? Uh, it just never piqued my interest. You don't want to stick your fingers in other people's mouths? Uh, it's not that I have a problem with it. It's more along the lines of I was very used to it growing up so interesting yeah i wanted something a little bit different and dental lab seemed to be different enough uh and then i get into it start taking classes and i'm falling in love with it are so you it's yeah it's easy to fall in love with absolutely. it yeah yeah what about you nate number two so my background is i i actually grew up around a dentist office and a lab okay uh, my grandfather was a dentist down in Hapeville, Georgia. Oh, okay. Um, so for the longest time, yeah, up until I was about six or so, I had knowledge of lab work. and how His really office had a lab in it? It did. It, it was in the basement of it. it was of course. A, they're always in the basement. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it, was, it was filed away in my mind forever, but recently with COVID hitting and everything, I, I was looking for a career change. I was an English major before this. English major. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of made me reevaluate what I was going to do for a career and everything like that because it just became so hard for me to try to finish my degree with all the changes going on. So I was talking with my mom one night, and I've always had a predilection for hands-on work, and yeah. I do woodworking, things like that. Okay, yeah. And she brought up dental lab tech work because she worked as a hygienist in his office as well. And you so, guys are deep in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little um, bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just one of those things that before I was an English major, I was an art major as well. So it's, it's always something I wanted to kind of direct myself towards that artistry. But yeah. I, I couldn't really find a pathway to make sure. a career out of it. So it just became one of those, you know, when she related back to me, I realized, oh, yeah, that kind of fits all the boxes. And I'm... I'm I'm kind of disappointed I hadn't realized that until now yeah. <laughs> after all this time. It's very common for labs to reach out to dental schools to find employees because yeah. they have that people that are into the art and their hands and stuff. Right. I mean, that, that was just kind of the end of it. And as we've been going through the program, we've only been in the program for six weeks now. Oh, really? But I didn't realize that. Yeah, we're, we're very fresh. Okay, yeah. But it, it's it's very clear to me that this is kind of what I've been waiting for my entire life yeah. to be able to do so yeah it's super satisfying what Absolutely. what we get to do six weeks in what, what are you guys thinking what are you experiencing is it daunting does it seem like a lot i'm just curious yeah well, i mean <laughs> in a way what was it like what two weeks ago that we had our first round of tests and, already uh, mm-hmm. yeah what the heck <laughs> well i mean that's not as bad as some places i have when undergrad i went into a class and i had a test at the end of the week Ugh. And it was uh, a small book of information. Oh, so, geez, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still a lot of information in the six weeks that we've been in. Sure. It was like five, around the five-week mark that we had a, had a round of tests. And whew, we were studying it for a while. Yeah. A lot of terms. <laughs> it's definitely the first thing. Yeah. We, we, we counted it up. It was, it was about, at least for me, it was about 300 terms. 300 new lex, like, lexic. I can't even think of the word right now. 300, 300 words terms? to add New to terms. our lexicon. Yeah. lexicon. yeah. Wow. I 
don't even know if I could tell you 300 dental terms. <laughs> so it's, it's not. It's been a, it's been a process just to get into the the basis of it, but yeah. it's coupled with the hands-on. It's just been more reinforced than anything. It's allowed for that foundation to kind of be sure. down. Sure. Sure. So early, it's all about anatomy. It's all about terminology. Have you touched anything? Have you done anything yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, they start that we've right away. With our, yeah, 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 pretty much. We've uh, messed with articulators. We've been doing wax ups for a, uh, a denture. Um, oh wow! Yeah, messed and with different kind of uh, occlusion bases. Yeah, and just right. in the last two weeks, we started setting teeth and actually processing them. So. Yeah, yeah. What What's exciting to you? Uh, honestly, right now the wax buildups for the uh, for the teeth. Oh really? Yeah, I'm. Uh, You're I'm also that. an artist, so. Yep. Um, I've been trying to figure out a way to work with my hands for a living for a long time, like he has. Mate so, number two. Like mate, mate number two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should be able to remember my name. It's yours. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you would think. Guys, the bar's <laughs> just opened. <laughs> haven't even touched a drink yet. <laughs> Once I actually got down and got down into it, I don't know if Nate Two has experienced this yet, but I forgot time was a thing for oh, a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just get into that flow. You know, there's so many technicians we talk to on this podcast. That is their zen space. Oh, yeah. That is it. What's your favorite, Nate, too? What are you uh, into? The wax-ups have been, <laughs> I say, I'd say meditative. It's, it's been nice. You're talking full denture wax-up type mm-hmm. things? Oh, or just um, individual uh, crowns? Just really the anatomical yeah. morphology of, of teeth. Um, but f- for me, it's, oh, man. I, I've been really enjoying the actual setting of teeth and, really? and the full denture process. It's one of those things, at least from my background, specific measurements are not my forte. <laughs> <laughs> so being able to adjust something until it looks right and just works, yeah, that's more of my bag. I, I'm, I'm a little bit more inclined to that. So I get that. I've been enjoying being able to use my just more of my aesthetic eye to kind of yeah. fit everything in place. Setup technicians are in high demand. Oh, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> high demand. Now, wax up of crowns is not very common in labs anymore, but you can transfer that to digital. Now, when we took a tour of Durham, I don't know, I've been here all week. Wednesday, I yeah, think? That's when you yeah, were there. it was Wednesday. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, they had a whole digital section. Yeah. yeah. Are, when you work on these hand waxes, are they explaining to you that this is something you'll be able to do digitally? So I didn't really know that we were going to be doing digital stuff until I came to the convention, but apparently we will be touching yeah. it later on, and that is probably the thing I'm looking forward to Are you to guys excited most. about that? That oh, was my yeah. next question. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. I do digital 2D art. Okay. Hearing that I can mess with 3D digital artwork is probably the most exciting thing I've it's heard cool. for the yeah. entire program. Yeah, with the wax ups, it, the foundation is they've started to explain how it's similar to an additive property mm-hmm. as far as building up the uh, the anatomy. So Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I've worked with technicians from a bunch of different backgrounds, but the ones that get the structured learning at the beginning, you guys are doing it right. You guys oh. are going to be it's you're going to come out of this rock stars because you'll know more about function and the terms that most people learn on the bench. And you'll be able to go with it. I mean, okay. Just, what are you hoping to do? Own labs? Oh, well, I mean, everyone hopes of owning yeah. their lab <laughs> one day, right? Yeah. But um, really, I'm just trying to get... You want to uh, get your mom's work? <laughs> <laughs> just trying to help the family, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep and it in the family. Trying yeah. to build on what they uh, set up already. So. Yeah eventually turn it into my own thing and see if I can get my see if I can coerce my siblings into the same thing. There you go. There's uh, a lot of labs out there where it's family oriented. Dads, kids, siblings. I mean it's very common. Yeah, what about you? Are you looking to own your own lab? <laughs> I'm yes. not exactly sure yet. It, it honestly I'm I'm still just kind of in the love of the just kind of working at the bench right now. Yeah. So whether that translates into me eventually going into a management position or owning a lab, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. But it's still kind of the beginning of the journey for me. So. Sure. It's and early. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't realize you guys were only six weeks yeah. in. I mean, yeah. I <laughs> when we were talking to you, I thought you guys had been doing it for a while. but It's very much a we'll-see stage right now. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get it. As time goes on, we'll get 
but being More here, the an idea. It, it's very clear. That everybody we've talked to basically said, you can kind of just do anything yeah. with it, as far as your ambition and skills will take you. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to be on the bench the rest of your life, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can do that. If yeah. you wanted to manage a large lab, you can do that too. If you wanted to own your own boutique lab that you get to control its own destiny, you can do that too. That's yeah. the great thing about our industry. It's, it's intimidating and also extremely exciting to yeah. hear that. So. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many different avenues you guys could go. Yeah. I mean, that's so exciting. We're only just learning about a few of them just by being here today yeah really exciting really yeah exciting do yourself a favor and go to the chicago lab day yeah if you can make it i know it's quite a distance from here we've heard it mentioned a handful of times and honestly chicago's already been on my travel list so yeah, yeah same here <laughs> it is an awesome i gotta find out whether their pizza is really the best or not ah, you know they're good. I don't know if I'd say they're the best. I've had good pizza in Indiana, so you know, okay. but I'm sure I'm yeah. going to get shot from Chicago for saying that. But eh, we'll see. Stay, on, stay on your side of the border. You'll be fine. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me for a few minutes. I'm excited to hear that people are still in, yeah. entering our industry well, thank through you schools. I think you guys are going to be rock stars. So. Thank you. Well, thank, <laughs> thank you for your awesome. confidence. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Whitmix is now providing its milling customers with Prima milling tools, the high-performance milling tools engineered specifically for Roland Mills. This new tool range outperforms the competition. The results show that not only does the tool last 29% longer than most others, their precision creates a pinpoint accuracy ensuring a perfect fit for the patient. Whitmix's own digital technical support team said, quote, The tools are a drop-in replacement for Roland tools so there's no need to make changes to the software to accommodate them. All of the Prima tools seem to have an exceptional life and produce a great surface finish. We recommend switching to them. The uncoated tools save up to 40% per restoration over the market leaders, but you can now save 20% on these great tools through January 10th, 2021. To take advantage of this offer, visit Whitmix.com or call 1-800-626-626. 5651. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitney. A big thanks to Patrick, Tom, and both Nates for sitting down with us and Elvis and telling us your stories. And you know, we love to chat face to face and we can't wait to do it again. Since we have finished up the conversations that we got at the Digital Forum, we wanted to give a big thanks to Whitmix for not only having the event, but allowing the podcast to be there so we could have so many great conversations. It was a really great event, and uh, both Elvis and I cannot wait until next year. It's going to be at the same spot, same place. Be there. It's going to be even bigger. Right on. Can't wait. Bigger is better, you know. Bigger is better. <laughs> Sometimes. Was <laughs> oh, this our last one before Christmas? Oh, it is. All right, everybody. Have a great holiday, and we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. So how do you know what to say? Because I have it on my phone. You're fancy. Yeah. <laughs>